Well, a few years ago, the Chamber established the High Impact Legacy Award to recognize a person, group, or business that has made a significant and long-lasting impact on our community. Previously, the award winners were Mayor Bob Bolin, Congressman Jim Wright, and the DFW International Airport. Today, we honor a remarkable visionary, not only for his business achievements, but for his passion in restoring the historic buildings of Fort Worth, Bob Simpson. As most of you know or read in the program, Bob's life journey took him from the cotton farms and oil fields of West Texas to Baylor University to an accounting career, ironically, with one client, guess who, Texas Rangers, to the founding of Cross Timbers Oil Company, which later became XTO Energy, and we all know that story. His business achievements are legendary, but we're here for another reason today. In the early 1990s, XTO was leasing space in what was then a raggedy W.T. Wagner building when the California owners put the building up for sale. Oh, I'm sorry, we have, yeah, we have pictures. Bob seized this opportunity and bought the 20-story building for a whopping $300,000. Pretty good buy. <laughs> Within the next few years, Bob led the restoration of the building to its former greatness and is now a signature element of the Fort Worth skyline. As XTO's employee base expanded, so did Bob's vision. He not only bought additional landmark buildings, he restored them with precise attention to architectural detail, even incorporating artifacts from previous owners. For example, when the Baker Building, now known as the Simpson Building, was bought, brought back to life, so was the long-lost First National Bank clock that had been missing for decades from the corner of 7th and Houston. It's now returned as a fixture in Fort Worth's downtown scene. The former Transport Life Building at 714 Main was next on the list, and it was also transformed when XTO purchased it in 2007. It now has been fully renovated to its original 1920s condition. Most recently, many of us have watched with awe as Bob and his longtime facilities vice president, Joy Webster, have worked on the old Fort Worth Star-Telegram building. Now, having crawled around in Eamon Carter Jr.'s office as a kid, I doubt Mr. Carter would recognize the building now. Now home to Bob's company, Morningstar Oil, the original entrances of the building have been reclaimed, as well as the exterior friezes and ceiling detail. The two-story mezzanine, once cut in half, is open again as an exhibit hall with many unique designs. Classic cars, Eamon Carter's airplane, and a WBAP radio tribute. I think we have that one too. There we go. Bob's list of projects goes, on, goes even longer, including the Petroleum Building, the Tyndall Storage Warehouse, the Benyon O'Keefe Warehouse, and the Swift Building in the Stockyards District. In all, Bob's devotion to preservation has re resulted in the restoration of over 886,000 square feet of downtown space. Simply amazing. To recognize Bob's passion for the historic Fort Worth skyline and the businesses that thrive in our city, and in gratitude for the lasting gifts he's made to our community, the Chamber is privileged today to present Bob Simpson with his High Impact Legacy Award. Bob, will you please join me? I'm honored to, uh, to receive this gift. I've been here since 71, so Fort Worth is my home. Uh, raised my family here. So it used to be the best kept se secret in the nation. Now it's word's kind of out that this is a great place to raise a family. You know, we, uh, I first developed an appreciation for the past and the treasures of the past from my mother uh, where I would give you know the, the first appreciation for the, our legacy assets to her and uh, you know again we started with the, uh, the Wagner Bill if you've never been in it it's a great building uh, one of the hardest things in merging with Exxon was leaving that building I was 
wondering if I'd ever find another building I loved as much as that one. And fortunately, we discovered the Star-Telegram building. And so the, uh, we moved on to it. And then today, I've got the wonderful privilege of occupying Eamon Carter's original office. Uh, it was built in 21. It's got lots of wood and or, you know, ornate ceilings, and it's untouched other than uh, feeding the wood a little bit. It was dried out uh, and bringing its beauty back to its original glory. But it's when I saw that office, I said, well, this building deserves restoration. Uh, the rest of the building was pretty much a tragedy, as uh, if you'd been in it from the things that had happened to it, including the lobby, which was spectacular when built, uh, but had been destroyed and made into two floors. And so with uh, the pictures and all the uh, heritage that we were able to find, uh, treasured photographs, uh, Joy Webster, who, Joy, where are you? I want to recognize you today. Stand up, please. So, yeah, that's, that's all that stuff that you saw, all those beautiful buildings, this lady uh, led the restoration of. I had a little input, uh, quite a bit of financial input. <laughs> and uh, with her great leadership, you know, the Fort Worth's been the beneficiary of all that beauty. And so as we commenced the building, uh, we started not long uh, after we bought it, which is going on five years. I was talking to a friend. I said, you know, the gosh, this goes slow. Uh, looks like Sundance Square has built a building since we started. He said, well, excuse me, Bob, it's two buildings. And you say, well, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, I called him a personal name. I, I'll leave that up for you to guess. He, he was the uh, Exxon guy that was running XPO. We've become friends. He's probably the next chairman of Exxon. Jack Williams. And so the one thing that I'm proud of in the merger with Exxon and what we were able to do, and you should share the pride of, is, you know, Houston's known as the capital of energy in America and the world, pretty much. And so uh, in this little town of Fort Worth, in these great buildings that you've seen today, the largest natural gas producer in the world was created between, we were first the largest as a company, XPO, and then when it was merged with Exxon, it became the largest in the world. And so right here in this town of Fort Worth, a non-energy center, and uh, these great buildings, we have a treasure, you know, the largest natural gas producer in the world. And that stuck, you know, we, I was a little concerned about them moving to Houston when we were talking about merging, and I managed to talk Rex into giving Fort Worth a try. Uh, he told me the organization was very important to him in retaining, and I said, well, these people love Fort Worth. I worry that you'll lose a lot of them trying to, trying to take them to Houston, so give it a try. I'd suggest you leave it named XPO to give it the independent culture and identity, and he did both. And so the community's lucky today. Uh, we, had, we had 1,600 people in this city when we merged. It's now 3,000, and they've been bringing people from Houston to here. And so Fort Worth's the beneficiary of that move and the growth uh, that it's enjoyed since. But you know, what I would say about old buildings is and old treasures in the past is, you know, in looking toward the future, you know, I've always believed we should first retrace the footprints of our past, and that's what I've tried to do. So I love this city. Uh, thanks for the award to the chamber. Glad to see all the mayors here today. 
and uh, I appreciate this award.